welcome back to another edition of Chapter Chats. <laughs> hey guys, this one's live. We're so excited today um, to talk about Kristen Hanna's new book, The Four Winds. Yes. And uh, in preparation, we did some other Kristen Hanna reading as well. Um, I read The Nightingale, and I read The Great Alone, um, so we could kind of have a feel for uh, her writing style and everything. So, The Four Winds. <laughs> there was a lot, there's a lot to talk about here in The Four Winds. Um, first off, was it what you expected it would be, perhaps? It was not. Um, I really enjoyed The Nightingale, so I expected, you know, deep history. I expected a female perspective. Um, you know, and we all know about the Great Depression, but I was not prepared for uh, the intensity of kind of the hardship that just did not stop. I know, I really, um, I mean, obviously it was called the Great Depression, so I don't know what I was expecting, sort of, when I started to... Um, read this novel, but yeah, it was kind of the whole theme of the novel was survival in my opinion, just Definitely. sort of like how can we make it through this, these hard times. Well, and all the different choices, like I think we got to see multiple different ways of how you deal with just that level of travesty, I don't know, <laughs> but it's tragic. Um, <laughs> I know, and I really appreciated how this one was a lot um, of the female perspective of what yes. women had done during this time um, without their husbands because obviously they couldn't survive without yes. everyone chipping in to kind of work to get through these times. Absolutely. Even kids. Yeah, and we've, you know, we've seen great, great books, um, Grapes of Wrath. Um, there have been so many movies, of course, about the Depression, but I really enjoyed seeing Gosh, I don't even want to say quieter, but like just a different perspective. Um, very f familial and very, you know, everybody, the, the mom, the grandparents, the kids. Yeah. And I liked that. I definitely, um, I definitely appreciated that perspective as well. This book ultimately left me just feeling a little sad and somber oftentimes when I pick it up. It was, it was very serious. Um, there were parts where, you know, you kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, Small victories. Yeah. yeah, and I know for me, um, all, all the parts about libraries and librarians, definitely. We're uh, very partial to those. <laughs> <laughs> so anytime, you know, at the beginning when she's reading the book and that's kind of what pushes her to step outside everything she's ever known, I was like, yes. And then later we see yeah. the librarian kind of, I don't know, a little rescue moment for both her and her daughter. Yeah, finding that comfort in libraries and what yes. books can bring and kind of adventuring away from what they're going through, but yeah. adventuring in a book. Um, and another really cool trend that we saw throughout this is yes. Be Brave, which I thought is a, um, something that was repeated over and over and over again. Be Brave, she would tell it to herself. Her grandfather had told it to her when she was younger. Yes. Um, and so when she was like, oh, I don't know if I can or be brave. I was like, be brave. And I, I felt that kind of emotion every time they mentioned, you know, I carry this coin. Um, I was like, oh, that's right. The, the bravery of Tony and Rose coming to a completely new country and then, you know, watching all of their hard, hard earned farmland blow away. <laughs> Literally blowing yeah. away. Yeah. So, so all the characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that, and that's the only thing that kind of came to mind to sum up the whole book, I felt, was like, be brave um, from start to finish. Yeah, I, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's hard to be like, I absolutely loved it because it's such a sad story. <laughs> even, yeah, toward the end, I even wanted, like, just so much happiness, you know, and for a while there you get <laughs> sort of a little glimpse of it, and not so much. I don't. Um, and comparing that to so you've read The Nightingale, yeah. how was that storyline compared to The Four Winds? Um, I feel like a little bit happier of an ending. Although, um, yeah, because I think I feel like you get to that like 75, 80% mark in The Nightingale, and you're like, I was crying, ugly crying, <laughs> more than once. But then there's 
there's kind of a redeeming. And there was some redemption here too. Um, I think Loretta, Loretta, uh, kind of realizing the dream that her grandparents had had for mm -hmm. their son. And um, so, it, spoilers, but it, <laughs> there is some of that. But the man, the sadness and the tragedy just that's a lot to come back from. I felt the same with The Great Alone. The first, I don't know, 60, 75 percent of the book, I was just like, oh you know, these poor women and what they're going through. Um, and then, toward the end, I as well was ugly crying. Although, in this book, maybe for a glimpse I had watery eyes, but I, I wouldn't consider how this one had wrapped me. I was so involved with um, yeah. with the characters, and then toward the end, I, I was ugly crying. I don't, I don't know if I felt that with this one toward the end. I didn't either. Um, I think there was a realization, like, oh, this is happening, and then, and I don't, I don't know. Um, we we both have said before that you know the took a little political turn at the end. Um, I wasn't expecting to hear about the unions and, and all of that, so that was I was kind of surprised. They kept building on it, but then it was sort of like, whoa, it, <laughs> this escalated a little quickly. Yeah, maybe it was the, maybe it was that it was such a quick escalation and then a quick turn. Some of the reviews that we read talked about, like, oh my gosh, could, could anything else bad happen to this poor woman? Um, or that it was slow in the beginning, which I think we both felt that a little bit too, but I think that it was intentional. I think that the writing style was like that to kind of show, can you imagine being on your farmland and hoping season after season that you're finally going to get rain, only to be disappointed? only for it to get worse. And then the constant breathing in that dust and oh. what it does to your body and your, your kids, your children, oh. which we experienced in this book, mm -hmm. how could it? It was during the Great Depression. How, what glimmer of hope could you have out of that? No. Um, I felt she set the stage very well and, you know, it, it kind of was, I know a lot of reviews that I read, people were not happy with Kristen Hanna that she released this book during now. the pandemic. Yeah. But at the same time, I also feel that she did it intentionally. Um, I listened to the audiobook portion at the very end. She had, um, she mentioned how she had lost somebody near and dear to her during this pandemic um, due to coronavirus. And I feel, if anything, there's hope, right? There's Absolutely. hope to come out of this. Look what we've come through before as a nation and look what we've come out of after it. Um, so I feel like it was very intentional, uh, the release of this book right now. Um, we can relate to it. Sure. Especially the mask wearing. <laughs> right. Um, the gas mask. Except they were wearing gas masks to be able to um, stop inhaling yeah. the dust. But I feel like you could relate to a lot of it. I mean, a lot of this year has been sad for a lot of people. So I feel like it was very relatable. Um, but that, it gave me a little bit of hope because yes. eventually... Things changed. Um, I'm going to take this as a segue into uh, one of my favorite quotes in the book that I wrote down because I think it goes along with this. Um, it is our idealism and our courage and our commitment to one another, what we have in common, that will save us. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think we all felt that this year. And I think, you know, every time when she finally got to California and meeting all of these different people from all these different walks of life all experiencing something similar, hoping, you know, kind of against logic that there was a way out of this and a way through it, and there were little glimmers of hope. The, uh, the other part in this that I absolutely loved was when they go into the barber shop yeah. or the beauty shop, and I was like, oh, please don't be mean. Please don't be mean to them. And then they were so wonderful. They were so wonderful and gave them a little makeover and yeah. little tiny glimmers of hope that they gave us. Other people mm -hmm. who recognized we're all human. Yeah. <laughs> because so many people, as the Okies, were mm -hmm. you know, coming into California to work um, and try and find work, those people were almost ignorant to 
what these people were going through. Sure. Um, they were not very nice to all these people coming into their communities. They didn't get treated well. So to to have that experience that they had in the barbershop, and we're all human, um, even the library that she went into, the librarian, of course, <laughs> was always kind. Um, and it, it were those little things that I clung to in the book, like, oh, you know, there is a little bit of hope, and yes. we're all human. And um, um, humanity's good at heart. <laughs> though some people didn't treat them that way in this book, um, no. but you never know what somebody else is going through, so yeah. I think there was a, an underlying storyline to this as well. And I, I think, you know, looking at, it was very easy to put yourself in their shoes. Like, Rose and Tony obviously didn't go with them. And that, I think maybe that was a real sad moment in the book too when they're all realizing the grandparents aren't coming and thinking that's a different decision and being able to kind of think, oh man, if I were in that position, what would I do? Do you stay? Do you go? Mm -hmm. And the other thing that was interesting is the grandparents kind of embraced they had this government man come and say, it's kind of your guys' fault for the way you farm the land, which is true, but also, oh, what a, you know, kick them when they're down. But they decided to accept that, learn from it, work with it, and stay. Well, she decided to go, and it, it didn't get better for either of them right away. They basically endured different hardships yeah. and different, but they weren't together, but they still wrote to each other and found comfort in that. I did which, like the letters. Yeah, I found um, comforting, but also just, again, we've mentioned it many times before, but you just kept feeling, oh, could yeah. anything else bad happen to this poor family, all of them? And how, how would you deal with it? I, you know, we all want to say, I'm not Rafe, I wouldn't run away from my problems like that, but I, I don't know, I haven't been in a situation that's that difficult, and I... But you feel like the only way to get better right. from what is worse already is to adventure out and try and survive, try and find yeah. something that's better. Um, and what, the other thing which I found, you know, as a mother, and you too, is the things that you do for your children. Yes. So they traveled. She traveled all the way just because her son was um, was not yeah, going to survive. Was not gonna survive breathe. And the, the doctor had said, she said, "What can I do to make this better? Go, leave. go away, leave." And and she was brave. She told herself, "Be brave." She took her children without the grandparents, traveled west yeah. um, to just try and find, try and survive. And for somebody who was self-confessed not brave, like I am not tough. Mm -hmm. I am not brave but you do what you have to do, right? How do you find that way to survive somewhere, somehow? And then you watched the daughter, you know, realize you have to play a part in this. Like you, lack of a better term, can't just be a bratty teenager anymore. You need to help Also, Loretta realized how strong her mother really was. I, I really liked that mm -hmm. too, because you kind of, you're reading her part and her point of view, but you're like, oh, why can't you just see that your mom has overcome so much? She's a rock star. Like, she just moved you for the safety of both of you yeah. um, alone. And I feel like full circle toward the yeah. end, almost as if it were too late, but she did realize that, wow, you know, my mom was a rock was star. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I really loved. Definitely. You want to read some book reviews? Let's do some book <laughs> reviews. Prepare you. Some of these aren't the best, so we call these the good, the bad, and the ugly yes. reviews. Which ones did you find? Um, so oh, we'll go. We'll go in order. For good, um, someone pointed out. You know, this is such a story of like gut and fortitude and strength and how through terrible times we persevere. Mm -hmm. Kind of same theme that that we've been talking about, and I totally agree with that. Um, I think that person saw sort of the hope through the book. Um, the bad um, was someone who really didn't like the union and the communism, and that's not the answer to America's struggles. And, you know, to that I say, right, right. I'm not disagreeing with you, but it's I... History. It's history. It's our history. Yeah, it was a part of our history which I felt I, I totally agree. It, yeah. it wouldn't have felt right as if, if she didn't include some of that. Because that was a huge part of this time. It's a movement that came out of this, this era, yeah. environmental and economic downturn. And then the ugly, although this one I, I kind of like, um, 
they had issue with the writing, and they gave examples. So as they went through, flappers they were being called, dry farming it was called, back pockets turned inside out, what were being called hoover flaps. Dust pneumonia, that's what they called it, okies they called us. And while I did not notice that as I was reading, um, I could definitely see how if it had, like if that had snagged me, I would have been like every time, oh, not again. <laughs> Um, I have found it, so we'll start with the good. This is a five star read for sure. The only downside is that this will be my most favorite novel of 2021, <laughs> and it's only February. Oh. <laughs> um, and for a lot of Kristen Hanna readers, I'm sure they felt the same with this book or mm -hmm. a lot of the books that she comes out with. Um, the okay review. This is a meet you in the middle kind of review, and I liked it, but I didn't love it kind of review. And unfortunately, it's uh, Hannah had me for the first 75% and blew it with the ending, which I'm sure alludes to the political yep. Yep. Uh, turn that it kind of took. Yes, it's that type of review. Hangs head, but it's Kristen Hannah. <laughs> um, and again, for all the Kristen Hannah lovers, I'm sure they felt the same at times. Absolutely. And then the ugly, worse than I expected. Absolutely hated this book. So depressing, almost too depressing for these times that we are in. It didn't take me long to read because I just wanted to finish it and get over with it. I really like the author's work, but this was my least favorite. Okay. Okay. Um, and for you who've read The Nightingale and I read The Great Alone, um, I, I think I liked The Great Alone just a little bit better and only because I do enjoy a little bit of a happy ending in the books that I read. <laughs> And so, because I left feeling more yeah. satisfied and happier toward the ending of this one, um, I think I would have preferred this one to that, but also this one really um, illustrated what they went through. And it, oh, my heart almost went out to them for what they were going through during this time. I feel like it was very historically accurate. Um, I, if given the option, I will always choose a World War II book over a Great Depression book. <laughs> That's just personal preference. Um, so I will also say that I think I like The Nightingale a little bit better. It's just that that time period resonates with me a little bit more. Um, and that could entirely also be because I want a little bit of a happy ending in this. The, the, the seed was planted for hope, but maybe didn't come right out. Actually so much hope, but also yeah. I don't know if my expectations were super high with a book that took place during the Great Depression. That's I guess a good point. going into it, you maybe don't expect a happy story because mm -hmm. no, nothing. Um, which brings me to some of the other book recommendations that I have um, about this. So reading all of these historical fiction novels, it kind of gets you into the era. Um, I found myself researching and Googling other different things about this throughout the time. And then I found this book, The Dust Bowl, um, Ken Burns. Ken Burns. Yeah. And I found myself flipping through the pages of this and just oh, heart-wrenching yeah. times um, that they were actually, because you know, you paint a picture in your head when she's going through this of what it looked like, but then you look at real photographs of this and you're yes. just like, even more so, um, you feel for her and what she went through during this yeah. time and her struggles. I like that. I like being able to kind of match, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. So being able to match that up with the, what you're feeling from from this. Um, so if you do want nonfiction for this type of story, um, National Book Award winner The Worst Hard Time uh, is fantastic. It's hard because it's what really happened and. It's really interesting, and I, you know, I'm a huge proponent of you got to know your history. You have to, but it's it's hard. Um, but also, kind of in the same way, this book, like once you get into it, it's hard to put down. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I grabbed some fiction off the shelf as well. So if you know, maybe this one was for you. If you enjoyed this one. Um, I Will Send Rain by Ray Meadows is a little shorter, um, but it's definitely a similar feel. You've got a family and what they're going to go through. Um, these guys actually are from Oklahoma, where these guys were from Texas. 
If you didn't like the four wins, or all of our depressing talk has made you think you don't want to pick it up, uh, The Truth According to Us by Annie Barrows. This is um, one of the authors of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society book, which I adore. Um, same era, um, not quite as dark. This family isn't hit with as many things over and over and over again. It's a little bit different look with different circumstances. Um, and, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, but as you can tell, this one is, is blue. It's a little lighter <laughs> than all of these other <laughs> grim, <brown>. depressing <laughs> So, maybe try this one if you want something that's um, not as harsh. And I also grabbed this book. Um, we actually have one on our lucky day shelf downstairs right now, too. Um, and this one, if you like us, we're partial to librarians, but uh, which keep coming up a lot in some of these new books that they're releasing. Um, like the subtle touches in this, this book is also um, about, it's got a strong female lead in it, um, and during the Great Depression as well, a little bit happier good times, um, and then what women had done during that time, which at that time was not typical for women right. to work as much no. or work at all <laughs> um, compared to the man. And so this book um, takes a little bit of a spin on that and women travel around, pack horse librarians. So um, cool. Yeah, which is one of the many <laughs> books that actually just came out about that. Yeah. And so this one also has more of a feel good and you, as you pointed out before, the cover <laughs> is also. Um, so this is The Giver of Stars by Jojo Myers, um, which who also wrote Me Before You. Yes, yes. Another so great read. Yeah. Let's see what else we have. Um, How are we looking on our time there? We're doing, doing good. Doing good. Doing good. We can maybe. Um, I did pull some <gasps> questions from online. If we want to take a crack at one or two of those okay. before we reveal what we'll be reading for next month. Okay. Great. Um. So let's see. talks a lot about the American dream. You know, for, for some it was farmland, for some it was college, for some it, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, do you think that the American dream is real or more of a myth? Hmm. So, philosophical question for us here. Yeah. <laughs> I think the American dream is different for everyone. I mean, yes. It, it yes. Ha how could it not be when we all have such different ideals in our mind of what yeah. the American dream could be, although I, you know, you hear the cliche, white picket fence, American dream, but it's so subjective though, I think you're absolutely right, it depends, for each person it's going to be different, and I think that's interesting, and this book looks at it too, your hopes for you, your hopes for your kids, don't always match up, so that's, or your husband <laughs> and yours, as you also, also true, <laughs> doesn't always doesn't match always up. Match up. Um, but yeah, I think that it is, is very subjective. Yeah. I think your American dream would be a lot different than maybe my American sure. dream, um, or what we want for our kids. And so yeah. yeah, I think that's a very. But I don't. I don't think that makes it a myth. I think if it was this idea that everybody is going to have A, B, and C, mm -hmm. um, that's probably not real. But not everybody would be happy with that. That's the American, <laughs> That's the American dream. <laughs> okay, what else you got for us? I have. Uh, will you read more Kristen Hanna? Will you read more Kristen Hanna? Um, as we saw in the reviews, some people were like on the spectrum of Kristen mm -hmm. Hanna books. This one's not my favorite. Um, I know my mother, uh, I think, is, is on a journey to read everything that Kristen Hanna has wrote. And for me, you know, I think that I would give another historical mm -hmm. Kristen Hanna a try because I, I really, she did a good job with the history of it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know um, that her more modern stuff is up my alley. We'll see what she comes out with yes. in the future. Yes. Um, I know she has Firefly Lane out right That's now. Right. Um, 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 Netflix. Yeah, ne yeah, Netflix series. I, I haven't read the book. But I did start the Netflix series, and I wasn't really a fan of it. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I didn't. I wouldn't say that I absolutely 
loved The Great Alone, and I didn't absolutely love The Four Winds, yeah. but I haven't read The Nightingale. Um, I really like her style of writing, though, mm -hmm. so not to say that I wouldn't venture into something that she wrote again, maybe not Depression Era, oh, or Post-Vietnam Era. <laughs> maybe I should give The Nightingale a try. No, it's, uh, World War II is not the cheeriest either, now that I think about it. <laughs> maybe, I don't know what she'll do next. We'll have to, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see, and again, um, we did do some polling for the last book, um, and you guys do. Historical fiction was rated pretty far up there. That's, that's true. So if you um, follow us on Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook, uh, you probably saw that we put out some stories because this is not a dictatorship. We want your input on uh, what to read. So we did our own March Madness. We did our own March Madness. We went head to head mm -hmm. with um, fiction. And though you all broke my non-fiction loving heart, <laughs> You overwhelmingly chose fiction. We, that, that did happen. Um, but, um, and then we took a bunch of genres head to head. Yep, we looked at um, all, all sorts of different genres, and uh, then we looked at the votes. And so the genre at that point, so, um, is fantasy. Fantasy one, romance was not too far behind. Very close. Neither was um, historical, historical fiction. fiction. Yep. They, they all rated pretty high up there and so um, when we choose June's book and July's book I have no doubt that we'll weigh it heavily on what the um, people had voted for and we'll give you some options and yeah. if it goes well and you like this next one that everyone chose we'll probably do another poll and see yeah. if you can help us out. So we chose four um, of the, I think we pretty much stuck to books from the last couple of years, mm -hmm. um, authors that had something new-ish out. Um, books with good reviews, best-selling list, yes. um, New York Times. Yeah. We looked at a bunch of oh, or something. I think um, Reader's Choice. Yes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> no, who doesn't like a good right. Goodreads Choice winner? Um, um, so we chose four that that we thought we might like, and we thought that that would be really fun to talk about. Yeah. And we had the poll up mm -hmm. on both Facebook and Instagram, and we allowed yes. people to vote. And. We did have a clear winner. Yes. Are you ready did. to announce so. the book? Drum roll, please. The House in the Cerulean Sea yes. by TJ Klune was the winner. Um, I've already started this book. Me too. <laughs> and I think you guys are going to be really excited about it, especially um, for all those fantasy lovers. Yes. Uh, it is described as being um, very hopeful, uplifting. Whimsical was used. I love a good whimsical book. Call it a whimsical. And for, for me, who doesn't prefer fantasy, I am absolutely loving this book so far. Yeah. Um, the characters are an interesting <laughs> bunch, and I, and I really hope that you guys pick up this book. We just got more copies here. We have the audiobook and ebook on um, Overdrive and Libby. Libby. Yeah. Yep. And we are really excited about it. Yeah. Um, Chapter chat is, so we, since we can't meet in person, I guess we should backtrack and say we're bringing book clubs to you virtually right now yeah. um, as a way to interact because we can't interact in person. True. So this is the next best thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to be doing this second Saturday of every month. Um, the next one, let me cheat so I don't get the date <laughs> wrong, is, I believe it's May. Yep, Saturday, May 8th at 9 a.m. live on Facebook. Yep, Facebook um, Live. Um, if you have an obligation, we know how busy everybody is. So if you can't tune in on Facebook Live, don't worry. We're also going to put it up on our Instagram, IGTV, and our YouTube page.